This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. More like in the 18th century aristocratic debutante presenting herself to society kind of coming out. I never had a proper bar mitzvah because I dropped out of Hebrew school, and I never had a quinceanera like many of my friends because when I turned 15, my mother insisted I was not a young woman of Latin American heritage. So, let's think of this book as a combo of all those time-honored, coming-of-age traditions I missed out on, minus the shitty DJ and plastic party favors. See, if you're familiar with my work, you are likely familiar with my persona the heightened reality, campy, scripted, comedic version who often breaks into song. Sure, that's one part of me, but what you may not realize is that behind that bubbly character is an actual person, an introverted only child full of angst, flaws, insecurities, past heartbreaks, and yes, impossibly perfect bone structure. Hopefully, as you listen on, You'll come to know more about the person behind the persona behind the pink cat-eye glasses. But why not let's kick right off by dispelling some of the most egregious fake news, alternative facts, lies, myths, and propaganda often circulating about me. 1. It was once written in a review of my work that I am the love child of Harvey Firestein, Bette Midler, and Anderson Cooper. While I was not able to fully corroborate this genealogy on Ancestry.com, nor can I practically imagine such a romantic tryst among those three gay icons, actually, now I'm totally imagining it, and so are you. I'm going to go ahead and say that one's true. Hey, it's my book. Two, I've seen a number of QAnon-style conspiracy theories about me perpetuated by cyborgs, trolls, and bots on social media. Recently... One such tweet referring to me as a, quote, little mutant freak, claimed that I am, quote, a CIA asset probably born in a lab somewhere. This is also entirely true. Three, some extreme right-wingers seem to believe I've been hired by Nancy Pelosi and the DNC to push their agenda. Joking aside, this is false. Believe it or not, my work is not at all politically motivated, and neither am I. I've never been a political junkie by nature, and I'm not a pundit. My shtick as a topical comedian and satirist has always been to cover whatever you, the audience, are talking about. It just so happened that around 2016, y'all started talking about nothing but politics. I wonder why. And I simply followed suit. While like many, I have become much more woke to those topics over the years, and while some of my spoofs may contain a heavier dose of my genuine opinion than others, my work is rarely a personal testimony and never a political endorsement or even condemnation in any grown-up sense of those words. It's merely a colorful snapshot of a moment in time as I see it, a funhouse mirror reflection of all sides. That has at least been my intention to this point anyway. So don't act so surprised when you tell me your Republican mother loves me too. I'm not. Why the hell shouldn't she? Four. Yes, it's my real name. Randy Rainbow, not Randall, not Randolph, not Randonce, is the name that appears on my birth certificate, my New York State ID, my Social Security card, and in black Sharpie ink on the inside of every pair of underwear I own. I know, it sounds like the corniest stage name ever. Believe me when I tell you, I would not have chosen it for myself. It was a very difficult childhood. Just read the next few chapters. My name may seem perfectly on brand now, but frankly, that's only because I had no choice but to grow into it. For all those birthers out there still demanding receipts, here, once and for all, in plain black and white, in the very first chapter of my very own book, is everything I presently know about the official origin of my very real last name. My great-great-grandparents, the Regenbogens, lived in what was then Austria-Hungary, likely between 1860 and 1880. Like many other Jews, they fled to England to avoid religious persecution. The German word Regenbogen was literally translated to the English word rainbow. The freshly minted rainbow family became domestic servants in Great Britain. 
It's believed they served royalty and were somehow well-known and highly regarded. Around 1900, they immigrated to the U.S., and since their name was already anglicized, no changes.